Hi everybody. I'm just sending a little bit of a message to check on you in this time of social distancing and self isolation and now the stay at home order by the governor. We really don't have very great ways to communicate with you so I hope those of you who are on our web page or our Facebook page uh, can take a few moments to uh, find some consolation and some hope in this message and my prayers and my well wishes for you and also once again you might wish to uh, pass this information on to other parishioners to try and help them along as we are now in our third week of this coronavirus uh, it's becoming very difficult on us and I think the next two weeks we're probably going to reach its peak and it's going to become very scary times for us where we really need to listen to the governor and maintain the stay-at-home order so that we can flatten this curve of this pandemic so it doesn't affect many more of us in a very serious way. We already have 38 reported cases in the county. We do not have any reported deaths as of yet and God willing we won't but it's amazing because just at the very outset of this last week we didn't have any cases and now at the end of like 10 days, 12 days, we've already have 38 cases. We're videotaping this little message to you from my prayer room in the rectory. Uh, this is maybe what you can say the nerve center. This is where I come to be alone, to be with God, to ask Him for His intercession, to pray for all of you, to ask the dear Lord to bless us. And on the makeshift altar that I have where I keep the Blessed Sacrament for my adoration and my prayer it is also a number of other things very special to me such as relics of some of the great saints Mother Seton, St. John Neumann, uh, St. John Vianney uh, there's some of the powerful saints that mean an awful lot in my life as I also am looking at you through the camera, right underneath you is, is a chalk drawing of St. Clair of Assisi that we saw being drawn on our pilgrimage to Italy two years ago and given to me by a friend this Christmas. A truly a meaningful gift and St. Clair has become a very special part in my life. Over to my right is a statue of uh, St. Aloysius Gonzaga. Uh, he died when he was 22 years old. He was aspiring to become a Jesuit. Uh, he was a Jesuit in formation. And when he was studying in Rome, uh, the terrible Black Plague hit Rome and many people died. And St. Aloysius got up early every morning and carried the sick to the hospital, cared for their needs, fed many of them if they could eat, at night he's kept late nights washing their sheets so that they would have clean towels and bedding and dressings for the next day. Sadly he succumbed to the disease before he could make his final profession as a Jesuit. But truly a, an important time I think as to contemplate Sal St. Aloysius Gonzaga and his youthfulness during this time. Um, also as I address you today on my altar of, of, of relics is uh, two roses. They're from Barbie Lesher's funeral yesterday. Uh, during this time, Barbie Lesher passed and also Albert Rennick passed. And we could not provide them with the full uh, benefits of the mass of Christian burial because of the pandemic, so we had cemetery services for both of them. And later on, we'll have memorial services. But I remember all of you, the living and the dead, who especially need our prayers. Also contained in that altar is a Lithuanian wood carving called the Whirring Jesus. I came across him with my spiritual director, Father Bill Schneck, many years ago. And it's a great little thing that I carry around with me every time I'm worried and I have an awful lot on my mind. Uh, the Whirring Jesus fits in the palm of my hand. When I have to go down to Allentown for meetings at the Chancery, he's always there with me, and when I need reassurance, I can go in there and I can hold him tight. So, 
During this time, the Lord is with us and He's worrying about what is going on. Um, so, these are difficult times and I think it's just important for us to realize the importance of social distancing, the importance of isolation, the importance of the stay-at-home order. Uh, you know, we should only be going out for those things that are very important. And for the very vulnerable in our community, you know, the elderly, those people whose immune systems are compromised, it would probably be extremely helpful to check on our neighbors, especially our elderly neighbors, and see if they need anything from the grocery store or whatever it may be. These are times for us to shine as Catholic Christians and especially as parishioners of St. Clair of Assisi. We ask the Lord to continue to bless us and to help us during these difficult times. And I'd like to just conclude, you know, another maybe five, six minutes. But today in our scripture readings for Mass, which I offered for all of you, was a reading from uh, the book of Numbers. And in that particular reading, um, the Israelites who Moses was leading through, through the desert to the promised land began to grumble against God. They wanted to take things in their old hands. And the reading from Numbers says that God sent seraph serpents which bit the people and which was very painful and they died from it. But God, through Moses' intercession, uh, realized that this is not the right thing to do and told Moses to make a serpent out of bronze and mount it on a pole. And anyone who looked at that bronze serpent would be healed. And they were. You know, certainly we take things in our own hands. We make our own gods. We don't trust God the way that we should. And, you know, when we do that, Sooner or later, we have to pay the consequences for it. So, we have to trust in the Lord. We have to turn to the Lord. We have to pray to the Lord during these very difficult times. The gospel which followed that reading from the book of Numbers talks about Jesus being lifted high on the cross. You know, he says, just like Moses lifted the bronze serpent on the staff in the desert, so the Son of Man will be lifted up for the forgiveness of many people's sins. And so we take that to heart. We take that to heart that God will take care of us during this difficult time. We need to pray. We need to have hope. We need to hang in there. And I hope as we get closer to Holy Week that uh, I'll be able to have maybe one or two more of these little public service announcements just to keep you going and to keep your strength and to please remember to pray for me. We have been working very hard at the rectory uh, despite all of this. Um, and if you go to our webpage, if you go to our Facebook page, we have prayers, we have homilies of what my words are for the weekend. And through the hard work of a group of people, uh, we are now even, we had Mass for the fifth Sunday of Lent, We'll have Mass for Palm Sunday. We also videotape the Chapel of the Sorrowful Mother. We hope to have on the Stations of the Cross. We have hope to put on very soon a virtual holy hour where you can sit in front of your computer screen and be able to pray to the Blessed Sacrament while we have religious music playing in the background. We are going to do various mysteries of the Rosary. And then, of course, we'll also have the liturgies of Holy Week, Palm Sunday, Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter Sunday. So uh, I'm not a big Facebook person, I'm not a big commute computer person, but right now this is how we can all keep contact. So I want you to know once again I'm praying for you, I love you, and I care for you, and until we get another message out to you, please be safe. These next two weeks are going to be difficult for all of us. God bless.